Hello friends, uh, my name is Surendra Singh and I am an assistant professor in the department of civil engineering at IIT Madras, Chennai, India. And today we will be going to discuss a very important topic with respect to CND waste. Uh, that is how much of the CND waste is available and uh, how it is generated as well as collected from different parts. And what are the various preliminary uh, you know, processing techniques that are usually adopted in order to uh, extract recycled concrete aggregates from CND waste. And in the end, we'll also be briefly discussing the various advanced beneficiation techniques that are used to enhance the quality of recycled concrete aggregates. So from here onwards, I'll be using the terminology of RCA, which stands for recycled concrete aggregates. So uh, uh, before uh, going towards the recycled concrete aggregates, uh, let's discuss how the natural aggregates are produced because uh, the production of recycled concrete aggregate is quite similar to the natural aggregates. Okay, so as you can see in the pictures, uh, for uh, the generation of the natural aggregates, we'll first go to the mountains uh, and then we'll put some detonators and then uh, the blast will be happening, uh, leading to the generation of the big size boulders. Uh, so it's very difficult to transport these big size boulders. Uh, directly to the uh, crushing units because you know the volume uh, occupied by the big side bolters will be higher. So therefore, the size reduction will be done at the site itself with the help of different techniques. So in this picture, you can see they are using uh, the normal excavator only in order to reduce the size. So uh, let's say the big boulder size is 1 to 2 meters, then uh, these techniques will be able to reduce the size to around 600 to 700 mm. And thereby, uh, you know, uh, after that, the uh, the small size of, of the boulders will be transported to the crushing units wherein the resizing will be done in order to uh, uh, get the different sizes of the coarse natural aggregates right uh, so as far as the fine aggregates are concerned uh, normally you know river sand was traditionally used so as we know rivers will be having a lot of uh, sediments Right, and then wherever the level of the water is lesser, uh, with the help of the excavators, uh, the river sand can be extracted. But right now, if you see uh, all around the globe, uh, there is a quite scarcity of the river sand. So uh, therefore, now the industries have started using uh, crushed sand, which is nothing but when these big sand boulders are crushed into small sizes, it can be further uh, uh, the size can be further reduced to below 4.75 or 4.5 mm, and then that crushed sand can be used instead of the river sand. So let's see uh, what is the total consumption of the natural aggregates globally. So in 2015, the total uh, worldwide demand for the natural aggregates was around uh, roughly around 50 billion uh, tons per annum. And if we compare with the previous data, uh, so you can see every five years, uh, the demand increases by roughly by uh, 10 billion tons. And it is predicted that in the next two to three decades, uh, the, the demand for the natural aggregates will, will be increased by two to three folds. That means a significant quantity of the natural aggregates will be required in the future. So do we have that much of, uh, you know, supply of natural aggregates for meeting our demands? Let's see. So uh, this is the data uh, from uh, uh, India. So here you can see the demand for river sand is around 751 million tons per annum. But however, in India, because of the uh, many reasons, particularly uh, negative effect on the environment, the mining of the river sand is banned in most part of the country. So that means uh, the only alternative is to use the crushed sand. So if we see the demand for the crushed tones for both for natural coarse aggregate and natural fine aggregate is around 1.6 billion tons per annum and we have su sufficient supply of around 126 billion tons. A same similar figure can be seen for limestone wherein the demand is 320 million tons per annum and the supply or the reservoir available is 89.3 billion tons. But it should be noted that most of this reservoir is in the restricted areas. For example, uh, uh, reserve forest where, uh, where uh, we cannot uh, do the mining. That means uh, if we keep the rate of production and rate of consumption of uh, uh, these materials uh, for uh, to be constant for next 30 to uh, 50 years or 40 to 80 years you will see uh, at max after 80 years will not be having any supply any reservoir available for natural aggregate that means this is the right time and high time uh, to look for the uh, alternative uh, supply for the natural aggregates and one of the uh, you know promising 
aggregates that can be used in the construction industry is C and D waste. So, here C means construction and D means demolition waste. Right. So, uh, how much of the CND waste is available? Right. So, globally, if you see, uh, China produces a significant quantity of the CND waste followed by US, India and France. But the moment you change the literature, you will see uh, there will be difference in the quantum of the CND waste that has been reported. For example, here the total uh, CND waste generated by uh, China is around 2.4 billion tons per annum and wherein, wherever in this literature it has been reduced by 50%. Uh, a similar scenario can be seen for India. So, uh, in India, we have uh, data from different uh, agencies, from different uh, academicians and researchers and you can see that uh, the, the quantum of the CND waste is varying from 10 million tons per annum to in fact 714 million tons per annum. That means there is a huge difference in the reported values. And obviously, for the material like CND waste, uh, there will always be differences because of multiple reasons and some of the reasons are uh, for example of all the total cnd waste around 35 percent is landfill right and then most of the time uh, the cnd waste will be mixed mixed with the municipal solid waste and then it will be very difficult to track it down and also there are many incident in fact most in most of the cases that we have seen uh, is that uh, the cnd waste will be illegally dumped because uh, of multiple reasons, maybe let us suppose the uh, dumping site is here and then it is very far from the uh, source of the CND waste or the charges of the uh, you know, landfilling is uh, very, very high. In, so, in most of the cases that we have seen, illegal dumping is being carried out and then uh, it, it is covered with the soil so that nobody will be able to see. And obviously, there is no proper inventory re with respect to the CND waste. Uh, so, therefore, the experts who are working on the CND waste thinks that the total quantity or the reported quantity of the CND waste is highly underestimated and therefore uh, proper mapping of the CND waste is required. So, uh, out of all the human waste or you can say the, uh, the waste that is generated due to the human activities, around 30 to 35 percent is the construction and demolition waste. Although this data is for European uh, Union, a similar figure can be you know seen for different uh, countries with a uh, little bit here and there. Uh, some tweaks, right? So, if we see uh, the composition of the CND waste, uh, it consists of different materials, right? For example, if we are uh, demolishing a building, so obviously we will be getting bricks and machineries and also we will be getting concrete from slabs, from beams, from column. And in case if we are demolishing the pavements, from there we can get the soil, sand and gravel and obviously we use steel, we use wood for doors and windows and then bitumen and also there will be some other organic impurities in the CND waste. So, let us say a CND waste is coming, right? It will be having uh, all these materials and when we crush it into small sizes, so the aggregates that will be generated will be called as recycled aggregates right the quality of the recycled aggregates has been seen to be very inferior to nat natural aggregates but however if we crush only this concrete portion uh, and then resize it the material will be called as recycled concrete aggregate that is our rca so the quality of the rca has been seen to be uh, significantly better than the recycle aggregate because recycle aggregate is a mixture of different components. But however, if we, if we demolish a building and then, uh, you know, obviously some other impurities will always be there. But however, we have the avenues from which pure recycled concrete aggregates can be uh, extracted. For example, payments. So, in payments, if I talk about the concrete payments which are used for, you know, major highways, we will be having two layers of the concrete, pure concrete. Uh, so, the top layer which is called as the wearing course and then the bottom layer which is uh, or the subsequent layer which is called as the uh, base course layer. So, here we use the concrete from uh, M30 grade to M50 grade and then in the base course we use the concrete of M10 to M20 grade. Right. So, similarly pure concrete chunks can be, uh, can, we can we can extract it from pile caps and also from the construction waste because what happens, uh, you know, some of the uh, material which is uh, not used then uh, in the transit trucks or during the construction uh, from there also pure uh, recycled concrete aggregates can be extracted. It shall also be noted that when the concrete, unused concrete is in fresh state, so immediately washing it with water will be able to give us pure 
aggregates out of it. But once it is set down, then we have to obviously demolish it in order to get the recycled concrete aggregates. Now, uh, let us see how the uh, you know CND waste is collected. So, uh, you know, this is a typical example of Chennai and uh, the same methodology, you know, similar methodology is followed for uh, you know, different parts of the country as well as globally also you can see a similar methodology will be followed. So, Chennai is divided into uh, around 25 zones, right, based upon the population and the other parameters. So, uh, every zone or two zones will at least be having one uh, designated area wherein, uh, you know, the CND waste that will be generated will be uh, sent to here. So, these uh, zones will be, uh, sorry, these areas wherein the CND waste will be stored are called as primary collection area, right. So, when the building or when your infrastructure is getting demolished, the owners can directly, you know, send the material there or they, in, at least in Chennai, uh, they can call municipal corporation and they'll come and then they'll collect the CND waste and it will be kept at the primary collection unit. And then thereafter, when the quantum of the CND waste is higher in the primary collection zone, then it will be transferred to the secondary collection area. Right. And from there, uh, when the quantum, again the quantum of the CND waste is higher in secondary collection area, uh, then it will be transferred directly to the recycling plant. Right. So, uh, uh, the various activities that happens during the, uh, you know, at these, prim, prim, at these transfer stations are uh, the segregation of the waste. So, normally what happens, we see a lot of, you know, uh, materials apart from the uh, you know, aggregates that will be there that can be resold. So, will be removed at this transfer station. But even before, uh, you know, doing the segregation, segregation will be discussing in the subsequent slides. Uh, so, before even doing the segregation, in fact, before even demolishing the building, some of the material that will be having high salvage values will be removed. For example, there is a use scarcity of the wood. Right, good quality of the wood. So, uh, and then wood, uh, the doors and the, you know, other things can be resold. So, because of the high salvage values, uh, doors and windows will be removed, right. Uh, similarly, uh, you know, the, the sheets, asbestos sheets that we use for the roofing purpose, if they are uncorrect, they will also be removed and they can be resold. Similarly, we see that the steel is the most costly component. So, obviously, whatever the frames we are having, uh, they will remove it before demolishing the entire building. And as far as the steel which we used in the reinforced concrete, right, uh, different technique is applied because uh, let us say if we have a concrete, let us say this is a concrete, this is a concrete and then uh, there will be bonding between the steel and the concrete, right. So, it is very difficult to remove it. So, initially what happens, uh, the demolition will be happening and then we will be getting small size chunks, right. So, up to a length, uh, the steel will be, uh, you know, cut with the help of the uh, gas cutters or any other tools. But it will be very difficult to remove the steel which is just inside the concrete chunk because uh, it is embedded in the concrete. The only way this steel can be removed is by uh, reducing the size of the concrete chunk. So, here in this picture you can see uh, these people wanted to remove the steel. So, with the use of the hammers, they are uh, demolishing the concrete. But obviously, as you can see, uh, it is very energy intensive and then, you know, it might not be cost effective also. So, normally what happen, uh, the buildings are demolished uh, and the size of the concrete that you will be getting will be roughly around 400 mm to 1 meter and then uh, the, uh, the steel which will be inside that, it will be remain intact. Uh, so, the segregation can also happen, uh, you know, uh, at the recycling plants also. So, here you can see uh, when the CND waste uh, is coming or the reinforced concrete is coming uh, to the uh, recycling plants, the big size steel uh, things, uh, steel bars are removed. Uh, so, nowadays, uh, you know, if you see uh, at the recycling plants, they are having the magnetic separator. So, mostly uh, two magnetic separators can be kept, one uh, during the feeding side where you are feeding the CND waste and one after the crushing unit. So, uh, what happens when we are feeding? So, this is the magnetic separator which is kept just after the feeding. So, the loose steel bars will be attracted by the, these magnet, ma magnetic separators and it will be able to separate it. And thereafter, the, the steel which is inside the concrete chunks, so after getting the crushed into small sizes and then this magnetic separator will be able to remove these steel bars. Right. So, uh, this is, uh, these are the photos that we have taken from South Africa. Here also you can see uh, big size magnets are kept before and after crushing and they are able to attract the steel bars. 
So, apart from the steel, there will be different uh, impurities, right? For example, plastic items, there will be paper. And then, uh, so uh, at the plant itself, what happens when the material is fed? So, this is a magnetic separator which is removing the steel bars, and after that, uh, the CND waste will be, uh, you know, transferred from uh, the feeding side to the crushing unit uh, through the help of the conveyor belts. So, here the labors are standing and they are picking the uh, big size uh, impurities wood, plastic and papers. However, the issue uh, happens with the small size portion which are not a, which cannot be able to remove by the uh, labors or uh, you can say which cannot be removed manually, right. So, what happened in that scenario, the uh, the aggregates are crushed along with the impurities and then uh, for the, when the, uh, when the uh, size is RC, let us say the size is R, uh, fine RC that is less than 4.75 mm. Then the entire fine uh, material will be submerged into the water and then uh, because these uh, wood, plastic uh, and uh, your paper are lighter than uh, the aggregate. So, obviously there will be floating uh, and then uh, it will be easy to remove them from the CND waste. So, here also you can see a lot of plastic caps and the smaller portion are removed following this process. So, this is the uh, process map, uh, you know, uh, of how the uh, CND waste are recycled in order to get uh, recycled aggregates as well as the uh, recycled concrete aggregates. So, as we discuss, uh, let us say this is a building, it is being demolished and then uh, the CND waste is transferred to the uh, primary uh, uh, collection area where the initial sorting is happening. Thereafter, it will be sent to uh, secondary crushing zone where the, you know, uh, for, from uh, at which location the CND waste is coming from different uh, primary collection areas and then it will be transferred to CND plants, right. So, at the CND plants also, uh, you know, this initial segregation will be happening, especially in the cases where uh, the, uh, the mat this uh, not effective sorting has been done at the collection points, right. And thereafter, the only thing that will be remaining is resizing. So, let us say we are getting uh, the, uh, the CND waste chunks of size of around uh, 400 to 500 m. So, it will be crushed. So, and then after crushing, what happens with the help of the sieves, uh, it can be uh, you know, separated into different sizes based upon the uh, requirement. For example, from 10 mm to 4.75 mm, 10 to 20, 20 to 14, 40 to 60. Uh, so, but however, in the case where we have uh, mixed excavated soil, for example, in case of the mixed CND waste, which can have a huge quantum of the excavated soil. In that case, uh, after crushing, there will be a wet process that will be applied. So, uh, in case of the wet process, what happens after, you know, separating out the coarse aggregate, the fine aggregate, which is lesser than 4.75 mm will be uh, submerged into the water. And then there are, uh, by following this wet process method, the sand could be, uh, could be uh, you know, uh, separated from the silt or the clay particles or uh, we can say soil particles. So, in this picture you can see this is this is the excavated soil from the uh, mixed CND waste. 